Hey everyone, in this quick tip, I'm gonna show you guys how to set up a default starter project inside of Blender. Creating a default startup project file allows you to save yourself time so you don't have to keep on entering in the same settings every time you start a new project. Keep in mind that everything I'm doing here is what works best for my own personal workflow, so things might change to fit your needs. Also keep in mind, as of the making of this video, I'm using the latest stable release of Blender 4.0, so things might change in the future or this might become obsolete. Here we are inside of Blender, inside of the default starter project file. Uh, just some quick tips uh, to navigate. Just use the middle mouse button to rotate. Hold control in the middle mouse button to zoom in and zoom out. And hold shift and use the middle mouse button to pan around the scene. So just some quick navigation controls. So starting things off, go up to edit, preferences. And then in the navigation tab, I like to select orbit around selection. This just means whatever object I have selected in my viewport, when I rotate like this, it'll go around that object and set up some arbitrary spot in the middle of 3D. Next, I'm going onto the Add-ons tab, and here I'm going to enable the Node Wrangler. Uh, and this just enables some shortcuts whenever you're dealing with nodes, just to help things go a little bit faster. And one more add-on that I like to install is Images as Planes. I'll make a video on this later. Next, moving on to the Systems tab. If you're using an NVIDIA RTX GPU like myself, uh, you want to make sure you select your Cycles render device, which is, in my case, I'm going to use Optics and make sure I have my GPU selected here. If you're not using an RTX GPU or you're not using an NVIDIA GPU, uh, then sorry, I can't really help you. You're gonna have to look online and see what other people are using, uh, what settings they're using with that same GPU. And that's it for the preferences. So make sure you click Save Preferences down here at the bottom and close it out of that window. Moving on to some other settings. So over here on the right-hand side, you'll see your Properties panel. I'm gonna start with the very top, which is the Render Properties. And under Render Engine, I'm going to select Cycles. Again, this is because I have a powerful GPU, so most of the time I'm using Cycles Render Engine. If you don't have a powerful GPU, you probably wanna be using EV. For the device, I'm gonna select GPU, because again, I'm using my GPU for rendering. And the following settings that you see me change, again, are just things that I do as a basic starting point. So sometimes these settings will change depending on what my needs are. This is just a good starting point. So for max samples, I pretty much almost never go above 500 samples. Uh, and then I like to have denoising in my viewport. Now for the render settings, again, I almost never go over 500, so we'll keep that at max samples 500. And then make sure this is checked with open denoise, or sorry, make sure this is checked with denoise. And then for the denoiser, I click on optics and everything else is good to go. Uh, moving down the list, uh, if you're doing any kind of animation, sometimes I like to use motion blur. A lot of times I'll just add this in post-production, but sometimes it's nice to just do it right outside of the render. So go ahead and click on motion blur if you feel like that. And then going down the list to the film tab, we're still inside of the render properties. And then uh, if you plan on having a transparent background, go ahead and click this box. And this will just make it so whenever you're creating your scene, the background behind your scene will be transparent so you can comp in a sky or whatever other kind of background image that you want inside of Photoshop. Moving on to the next properties tab, which is output. So at the very top here, the resolution, this is the resolution of the image that you're going to be creating inside of 3D. So in most cases, it's probably good to match the resolution of the image that you're editing inside of Photoshop. And in most cases for me, this is 3000 by 2000. And again, this is gonna completely change with every new project depending on the resolution of the image that you're working on. Frame rate, it doesn't really matter since I'm working with images here. Uh, again, frame range, you don't have to worry about anything like this if you're doing this for photography. And scrolling down a little bit, output settings here. Uh, we just wanna make sure you have PNG selected, RGBA if you're not planning on rendering out the background, uh, color depth 16, and everything else is good to go for this. The next tab down will be the World Properties tab. Now this is the area that you would add in an HDRI to your scene, or you can just use a solid color, but most of the time I'll leave this at zero strength just for starting out, and then I'll add this back in later. The next tab that we're gonna move on to is the Camera Properties tab. If this icon right here isn't visible, make sure you have your camera selected, and then the icon will show up down here. So for the focal length, again, you'll probably in most cases wanna match the focal length of the camera of the image that you shot. So. I'm almost always shooting on a 24 millimeter lens. That's one of my favorite focal lengths for photography for the style that I do. So I just leave this at 24 millimeters to start out. Now keep in mind that the focal length that you set here is the true focal length of your image. So for example, if you're using a Sony Alpha 6500 like I am, my camera sensor has a crop body sensor. So there's a 1.5 uh, multiplication factor to my actual focal length. So let's say for example, I'm shooting on an 18 millimeter lens the true focal length of my image is shot at 24 millimeters. If you're shooting on a full frame camera, what you see is what you get. Whatever you're shooting on, that's gonna be the focal length. So keep in mind the focal length right here is the true focal length of your image. Now moving on down this list, depth of field. 
Uh, you can enable this if you want to have some depth of field into your image. And it's as simple as just using the eyedropper and selecting an image that you want to be in focus. And if you're modeling everything at a real world scale, then the f-stop will behave just as you would expect it to in real life. Uh, but for now, we're just gonna uncheck depth of field. So the next thing I'm gonna do is delete the default cube and light, since I don't really use those. And then I'm going to import a human-sized reference object. To do this, I'm gonna download a free model from Mixamo.com. Uh, just create an Adobe account and log in. And you can select any of these characters that you would like. In my case, I'm just gonna select the default mannequin. And then for animations, I'm just gonna do something that's pretty basic, like standing. And we'll see, stand idle. This one should work just fine. Now from here, I'm just gonna click on download. Uh, FBX, doesn't matter the frames, with skin. Uh, and this should be the default settings. Go ahead and hit download. And once that's downloaded, go into Blender, go to File, Import, FBX, navigate to where you just downloaded that file. And just like that, you have imported a human-sized reference into your project file. Now, this isn't anything that I want inside of my final render. This is just a reference for when I'm building up my scene, and it also helps me position my camera in 3D space. So make sure you go up here into your outliner, and then uncheck the camera icon for both the armature and the character right here. Uh, the, the armature is just the skeleton that is used to pose the object. Uh, so even if this was rendered, you wouldn't see it. Uh, in fact, I like to turn it off. That way I don't see it. Um, and yeah, just make sure you have this camera icon turned off. That way when you do your final render, it's not going to, to appear. And when you're done using it inside of your scene to build things, you can go ahead and click on that camera icon to disable it in your viewport as well. So once you've done all this, you've pretty much made a good default starter scene. And again, settings change depending on what you're doing. Every new project requires different settings and different setups. Uh, but this is just a good start, solid setup that you can do, uh, that I do personally uh, when I'm creating backgrounds for my photography composites. So at this point, if you're happy with everything that you've done so far, go up to File, Defaults, and Save Startup File. And go ahead and hit that again. And then now, whenever I create a new Blender project file, Let's don't save this. Uh, here we are. Simple as that. It's everything that we've done. All the settings will be the same that we set it up earlier. And then, you know, you can just save yourself a few minutes with every new project. So I hope this helps and I'll see you in the next quick tip video.